That dead -eyed creep certainly has a few screws loose, that's for sure. Forget that guy. Right now, we need to discuss how we're going to proceed. What's there to discuss? Dead Eye and his crew have already brought down the Lord here. Just let them finish her off. I want to go after her. I second that. I think it's the best thing to do right now. We don't know if the Darkwings have what it takes to beat her. I'm worried what'll happen if we leave her to her own devices. <sighs> you make a good point, Rinwell. And maybe I'm just being overconfident, but between us and them, I think we have a better chance at defeating her. I have to agree. This realm isn't going to be truly safe as long as that Lord is still running around out there. We need to act. Fine by me. But isn't Dead I'm just gonna take all the credit once we're done? Our job is to break down the walls that oppress Dana. What he chooses to build in their place, that's his problem. For now, we'll head to this Estaluva forest Bayfon told us about. Whatever we decide to do, though, we should take some time to rest first. We've barely stopped since Men and Sia. Where are you going? Elfin. You should get some rest. What's got you up at this hour? Just let me be for a minute, okay? Why don't you go back to the inn? I will when you do. Have it your way. Shion. The Lord's days are numbered. I haven't forgotten our promise. You can trust me, you know. Maybe even lean on me a little. If you want. And if I say I will, will you finally give it a rest? <laughs> yeah, of course. Try to get some rest, okay? What was all that about? So, we're just going to check things out, right? In whatever that forest is called. Estaluva Forest! Next time, pay attention. Got sand in my eyes! The winds are strong here. Mind yourselves. Uh, oh, even the inside of my mouth is all sandy. Hoodle, don't get blown away, okay? The winds outside the capital are blowing as strongly as ever. You can definitely see why people call this place the Valley of the Four Winds. Indeed, Mahogsar is the realm of wind, just as Ganeth Heros is for water. Earth, water, fire, wind, light, and darkness. Rena is aligned to darkness, leaving each realm one element each. 
Is that because some elements are easier to gather in certain areas than others? That is certainly possible. But I suspect the biggest reason is to prevent the Lords from squabbling over resources. Funny. You would think infighting would come naturally to an elite class vying for a crown. True, but the Renans rule as a minority. Fighting ourselves would just be destructive. Though, as you saw in Menencia, any abstention from fighting is merely a facade. In the end, you all get usurped whether you like it or not. Hmm. That may be true, but something tells me that this time is different. We have to catch up to the Lord first if we want answers. Let's keep moving. What is that ring of rocks over there for? They don't look like they formed naturally to me. Oh yeah. Funny, I guess I've gotten used to weird rock formations. They didn't even register as being out of the ordinary. Most likely, they were brought over by us Renans when we first invaded the planet. Wait, those? So does that mean there's some kind of machine then? And if so, what in the world were they even used for? To manipulate the properties of Danis astral energy. Really? Think about it. Isn't it strange that the type of energy each realm collects is so fixed? Astral energy by nature isn't meant to skew towards one element or another so heavily. So the Renans reformed it for the crown contest. Sounds like the crazy thing a Renan would do. Renans these days are more advanced than Danans in some ways, but even they don't seem capable of doing something on that grand a scale. Or is that something that's possible on Lenegas? Or maybe the Renan homeworld? I can't claim to know everything about my own kind, but I myself have never seen anything that would be capable of such a drastic feat. But at some point, they did just that. Those are the sort of people we're up against. We should do our best not to forget that. You're so amazing, Kisara. You can cook, you can fix weapons. I feel like there's practically nothing you can't do. Maybe you should take a page out of her book and learn to make yourself more useful then. Hmm. I'd be happy to teach you if you want, Rinwell. I learned most everything I know from my brother. Really? Even how to sew and do laundry? Yes, indeed. He knew how to do anything. Sounds like he was a pretty handy guy when he was alive. He was. I'd always follow him around and badger him with questions. I was a real pain in the neck. Now that I think about it, he and Lagiel were the ones who taught me how to raise cats, too. Lagiel is that woman who was with him in the Gold Dust Cats, right? I remember now. The one with the really pretty hair. Funny you mention that. He also taught me how to maintain my hair. Not that those lessons stopped it from getting all tangled up during training. I think it still looks gorgeous. From what I can tell, it would appear as though the only thing he didn't manage to teach you was how to apply makeup. No, but that didn't stop him from trying. He really wanted to teach me everything. Only reason he couldn't was because I prioritized my training. And here I was trying to make a joke. I can't tell if she's being serious. The only one here who knows him well enough was her. Yeah, I guess only Megal could have told us if it's actually true. So... You don't say. How? I see. Hey!
Sure. Nice work. Oh? Very nice. Well? Yes! What? What? I don't believe this! All right? No. Sure. Really now? What? Well, that was a huge miscalculation. Yet you've drained your glass all the same. Alfin, have you been washing your clothes? It may not be my place to say this, but... Frankly, they're starting to stink. <laughs> now that you mention it, it has been a while since I did any laundry. I'll wash them for you if you want. Just remember to give them to me the next time you get changed. Oh, okay. Sure. Thanks, Kisara. And, Law, Rinwell, yours are starting to look a bit ragged. What do you expect? Of course they're going to tear up when we're out there fighting so much. Yeah, but it's still kind of embarrassing having it pointed out like this. And Shion? I wouldn't touch me if I were you. Of course. My apologies. All I wanted to say was that your sleeves are getting a little bit dirty. You don't need to worry so much, Kisara. It's only natural our clothes are gonna get a little dirty while we're traveling around. That's no excuse. Your outward appearance says a lot about your inner well-being. Now you've really set her off. Suffice to say, it would appear that the traditions of the Guard are still alive and well within her. What do you mean? What do the Guardsmen do that's so special? Mostly. I'm simply referring to the fact that they're a very... regimented and cleanly group of people. Do I really sound that weird to you guys? Keeping your clothes clean and mended is completely normal to me. Don't get us wrong. We appreciate the thought, Kisara. But we've got a long journey ahead. It wouldn't hurt to relax your standards. Just a little. If you're sure. I wasn't trying to overdo it, I promise. However, if it's making the rest of you tense... I'll do my best to tone it down from here on out. Still, if everyone could bring their laundry and clothes they want fixed, that'd be great. I'll take care of it all for you guys tonight. Don't you ever get tired?
courteous, aren't you? Pieces! Position, precision, timing. All a perfect ten. That's it? You should have messed with me. You take meticulous care of your fire. All good things come to an end. We're in good form. Outside the city than they are inside. Yeah, it's all ruined. Houses and everything else. Even if it was all in the name of beating the Renants, this is. Maybe something's going on in the forest. Together, that wasn't even a problem.
are freaking invincible! You I can't do it, yes. Because I can't afford to hesitate. Not against a worthy opponent. So those are Dan and Astral Arts. Huh. Nice. No scratches on my shield or my armor. Coming through. You got it! Okay. Okay. Can't get it. Oh. Another one down! Select well, someone seems in tip top floor. Nothing new about that. You require I'm still as humble. Step back. This one's all law. Mahog Sar, a land where the winds scar and the clouds stretch far. Kisara? What is he doing? Reciting a poem, apparently. Just let him be. How long has it been since I last went this hungry? You guys want to rest here?
I feel all bent out of shape. I know what you mean. Hard to settle down after seeing all those ruins. We fought hard to help liberate the people of Dana, but every realm we've been to along the way could have easily turned out like this. When powerful forces collide, the destruction they leave gets that much worse. So we've been lucky things haven't turned out worse up until now? Regardless, I don't want to see this realm get messed up any more than it already is. We have to capture this lord ourselves no matter what. Dohalim, your spare bracers were getting dirty, so I polished them up along with the rest of your equipment. Why, thank you, Kisara. I greatly appreciate that. Maybe it's just my imagination, but you sure seem to fuss over Dohalim a whole lot, Kisara. It is a little strange. Almost like you're still in his service. Really? That's certainly not my intention. Besides, he's not the only one I'm like that with. Hey, Law? I saw your clothes were starting to get holes in them, so I stitched them back up for you. Oh, wow! Thanks, Kisara! Point taken. Do you just like looking after people? I wouldn't go so far as to say I like it, but I get anxious if I don't. I'd always like to help if I can. It comes naturally to me. Back in the day, Miguel and I used to look after the younger kids a lot, so that's probably where it comes from. He taught me everything I know, and I mean everything. How to cook with wild plants, how to sew clothes so they'll last. Without him, we never would have been able to survive. However, you're not a lord anymore, Dohalim. You need to get used to the idea that people aren't just going to wait on you hand and foot. Yes, you're absolutely right. I'm ashamed to admit that I felt no qualms about her doing all that for me. As both a Renan and especially as a lord, one becomes too accustomed to those beneath you tending to your every need, both Renans and Danans alike. Sure, that's how all you Renans are probably raised. But just to be clear, we're not your servants, Dohalim. Got that? Absolutely. Moments such as this provide me with ample opportunity to confront my unease. It is difficult to tend with my own motivations. What do you mean? The truth of the matter is that my espousal of coexistence in Menencia hardly came from an idealistic place. That instinctive unease I feel deep within serves as a reminder for what it is that I, that all of us here, fight for. Don't be so hard on yourself. No one's going to abandon you if you aren't always perfect. Looking at her now, I think she's more like his mom than his servant. Hmm. What's up, Kisara? You look concerned. Uh, oh, no, it's just... I'm looking at our finances, and they seem to have taken a nosedive. I don't remember us making any big purchases, though. Ah, that may be because I borrowed a small amount to purchase something the other day. I don't think you can call spending more than half of our money a small amount. Half? Dohalim, what the hell did you buy? As it so happens, I came upon a rather special object that I've long been searching for. Are you talking about that junk? Uh, I mean, that uh, unique-looking trinket you're holding? Whoa, is that a... Indeed. It is a lost artifact from ancient Danon times. Most likely, it was used for some sort of rite or ritual. Ever since we Renans conquered Dana, such objects have been disappearing. I simply want to do my part to help preserve both our people's storied histories. Well, if it's to preserve Dan and history, then I guess we can maybe look the other way. Just this once? I don't know. Why spend money on something that won't even keep us fed? More to the point, we all contribute to that money. I don't like the thought of anyone dipping into it without saying anything. You must understand. Had I let that opportunity pass me by, I'd never have come across this item again. Dohalim, maybe no one taught you that money doesn't grow on trees. I may have been a lord, but I realize that much. It's not enough to simply realize it. You have to internalize the concept too. Even after all this time, you still have no real sense of money. Our funds aren't your personal wallet. We camp outside and eat grass for dinner to try and stretch every last gold we have. You never know when we may need it. Uh, I don't think we're so poor that we have to eat grass or anything. Shut up, Alfin. Shutting. 
Let's just agree to not spend too much or be too thrifty for our own good. Alfin, your blazing sword draws its power from Xion's Fire Master Core, right? So I'm told. Then why don't you use yours, Dohalim? You mean my Earth Master Core, yes? Yeah, I mean, you still carry it around with you, don't you? I do. Each Master Core contains the astral energy harvested from Danon's slaves over the course of the last three centuries. Though only a select few qualified people, namely the Lords, can wield them, they nevertheless hold too much power to simply abandon. If only the Lords are supposed to be able to use them, how come Alfin and Xion can use theirs? That may be because Xion has embedded the Fire Master Core within her body, something which wouldn't have occurred under normal circumstances. Okay, but why do you still carry yours around? Just as Danon see Master Cores as symbols of the lives and resources robbed from them, so too do I view mine as a symbol of our lasting sins. The pain and agony wrought upon this world by my predecessors, as well as the injustice enabled by my own inaction, are all housed within my Master Core. It is a testament of all that I have done wrong. It cannot ever be used again, nor fall back into the wrong hands. <sighs> Dohalim. You didn't differentiate between the deaths of Danans and the deaths of Renans. Danans and Renans both spill blood and languish in agony all the same. I just couldn't bear to hear it any longer. That's all. Little late for that. This looks perfect. Guaranteed to hit the spot. Rinwell, mind if we chat a little? I noticed you haven't been training Huda lately. Is he doing okay? Yeah, he's fine. He's been catching fish with Kisara, and he seems to be adjusting his diet on his own, so I'm not as worried as before. Maybe that's his way of pitching in, so you don't have to do everything for him. Yeah, maybe. I guess at some point he started taking a shine to everyone, too. Just like they did to him. You sound like you're okay with that. Yeah. More than okay, really. It feels... natural having Hoodle and everyone around. I know what you mean. We all support and take care of each other in our own ways. It's starting to feel like we're almost a family. Huh. I hadn't thought of it like that. So does that make you everybody's dad? Do I really look that old to you? Huh? You don't like that? Okay, how about you be the big brother? Shion is the big sister. And Kisara can be our mom! Well, then how about Dohalim for the dad? I don't really get that kind of vibe from Dohalim. He's more like an uncle. An old uncle, who's too preachy and snarky for his own good sometimes. And, and as for Law... Hmm... Well, Hoodle took the little brother role, and Law's definitely, definitely not the dad. Hmm... This is hard. Oh! Law can be the pet dog! A dog? Do dogs really count as part of a family? Of course they do! If an owl can be part of our family, so can a dog. <laughs> when you think about it like that, we have a pretty fun family. Yeah, a pretty big one as well. That's why I like it so much. I wish we didn't have to do anything dangerous. I just want to keep traveling the world with you guys the way we are right now. Y you okay? Uh, oh, it's nothing. Actually, I think I'm gonna go practice with Hoodle for a bit.
Hoodle, let me know if you sense anything. <sighs> I want to go back to bed.